Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the all new Mysteries and Disappearances video. While I'm waiting for your new suggestions for this all new go around, I thought I would mix in this video here having to do with yet another tragic disappearance, especially when it comes to this. At one point, it seems like things were so close to finding out not just who the kidnapper was, but potentially also saving this kidnapped person. When I was reading that information, it definitely tugged at the heart at, again, how close things were to that point. And you know about that more in a minute when I mentioned that information. But it has to do with this. You're looking at a picture of the young woman when she was uh, kidnapped. Her name is Tara Calico. And essentially, that's what this video will be, the disappearance of Tara Calico. So let's go ahead and let's share all that information here along with some new updates associated with the FBI. Apparently just last year there was a new set of rewards offered which goes to show that even though she disappeared all those years back the hunt is still on as far as finding out what happened to her and where she could be today. So you have to go back actually to 1988 specifically to see when all this started. At that time, Tara was 19 years old. She lived in a city uh, near an area called Belen, New Mexico. And the way I was reading the information, one of her daily routines was traveling by bike in the morning or early morning along a road called New Mexico State Road 47. It seemed like she did this pretty routinely, either by herself, and then sometimes she was accompanied by her mother, Patty Doyle. Uh, it didn't seem like it was that consistent as far as her mother joining her, but still, it was um, routine enough. But at one point, Patty stated that it seemed like they were being stalked by some people, either that or a motorist, and so she had advised her daughter, Tara, to be safe, you know, to carry some mace with her. But for whatever reason, Tara rejected that particular idea, and on that fateful morning, especially on September 20th, again in 1988, she told her mother that she was going to go out for her daily bike ride and that she was going to play tennis with her boyfriend at about 1230. And so this was like a way to advise her to look out for her just in case if she didn't return by that time period. And then sure enough, unfortunately, what happened afterward was 1230 came and went, and when her daughter didn't show up, that's when her mother, Patty, went along the road looking for the usual pathway that her daughter took to see if she could find anything, but she couldn't. She couldn't find her daughter. She couldn't find where she was located, nothing like that. The only thing that she found was at the Sony Walkman that Tara always carried around along with a cassette tape that was there. And so, of course, when her daughter was not around, that's when she contacted the police, told them about the disappearance, and then she told the police that she believed, especially that as far as this Walkman and the way it was found, that it might have been a clue left by Tara indicating, you know, what happened to her. Not of course, not of, of course, not only because of the, the state of the destroyed Walkman, but indicating that this was done in a very, very abrupt manner. But either way, though, her daughter was gone. Her bicycle was never found either, the one that she usually rode around with. There were no witnesses, nobody along the road, no passengers, nobody driving, no truckers, nobody who could indicate essentially what happened. Although there was maybe one witness who stated that they saw a 1953 Ford, something along the lines of that year model, and it had a camper shell, and they only saw this truck following her daughter, like following Tara closely behind, but that was it. That was probably the closest thing as far as any witness associating anything with her daughter before her disappearance. So when that happened, it was almost like she was swallowed up by the earth and no one that saw her thereafter. And the case kind of went cold for almost a year or so. Well, no clues, no leads, nothing was given in terms of her disappearance. But Cut to about June 15th, 1989, again, almost a year later, and then this happened. There in Port St. Joe, Florida, very, very far away in this case from New Mexico, there was a Polaroid that was found by a convenience store. Apparently, this was at a parking lot 
in a convenience store, and it was just randomly found there by a non by a woman, somebody who's just remaining identified to this day. But she found a photo there in that parking spot, and what she saw was this. Now, before I show it, I just want to mention that this may be a little bit unsightly when it comes to this photograph, but I definitely have to share it here because this uh, this could help again as far as finding out what the status is of Tara and what and what happened to her but you'll see the po the photo here now as you can see again it's not a pleasant picture it showcases what looks like a young woman and also a young boy and they're both bound together like they have some coming holding them in their back presumably some kind of rope or some kind of tape and then of course they have some, uh, tape in turn covering their mouths and they do not look um, you know, it's like they look bad, like something bad is happening to them within that picture itself. And so when the photo was presented to the police, they in turn were able to link it to Tara Calico, or at least the mother, in some ways. Like the idea is this, the, the woman featured prominently within the picture resembled very closely Tara. And there was some analysis done, not just by the police, but also by Los Alamos, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and then even the FBI, and then also Scotland Yard. They all examined the picture to find out if this was truly her. Because if it was, then it could point towards more evidence, of course, as to what occurred to her. And so it was determined at least by several of those departments that yes it was her the FBI did analysis and they stated that it was inconclusive but the the mother still believes that it is her because of this that book that's located on there on the bottom left is VC Anders's my sweet Audrina, which was apparently Tara's favorite book or one of her favorite books. And so the coincidence of this being next to this unidentified young woman, the fact that it again was Tara's favorite book, it's too much of a coincidence. And so the mother definitely believes that this poor young woman featured bound within this photograph is indeed her. And then as far as the photo and where it was found, the, the woman who found it stated that there was a truck, a Toyota cargo van. I don't know if it had like a camper as well, but presumably it was one of those larger vans and it was parked next to that spot before it left. And then that's where she found the photograph right next to it. She stated there was a man with a mustache believed to be in his 30s or so that was driving that cargo van before it drove away. And so this is where things get so, so close. Once she alerted the police to the encounter and then also to finding the photograph, the police set up roadblocks nearby that location because they wanted to absolutely intercept it and then find out more along what happened. But it seemed like it was too little, too late. Like it was that close to setting up the roadblocks before uh you know he would before the person whoever that was as far as a cargo van was found because apparently by the time they set it up the van was gone like it had already eluded or gone past the areas where the roadblocks were going to be set up and then it was it was gone like there was no trace of this cargo van afterwards so the fact that potentially not only did that cargo van house the kidnapper but also in this case Tara and whoever that poor young boy was within the picture as well that's what makes things so so tragic because that's how close things came to having not just the uh, kidnapper found but also these two kidnapped people so as far as that that was the closest link associated with the whereabouts of Tara. This was, again, a photograph that was found almost a year later. And it was believed that, again, that what ties it to Tara is that, that this photograph and the stock that it was fit, that it was used could only be made at a certain time. And so it was directly linked to almost her disappearance. In other words, it couldn't have been a photograph from many years back because the actual stock, the actual Polaroid that was used was only developed at a certain point and, again, heavily linked to the same time time period that she disappeared. But as far as other notices, other whereabouts of her, there was another picture that surfaced a couple of years later and it had to do with this. There was something along with a woman. It looked like she had um, like it was an extreme close-up so it looked like she had a blurred face on her but she too had tape covering her mouth and there was a fabric behind her that very closely resembled the same type of 
pillow, if you could call it that, that was taken from that van's picture. So that, that picture where it showed her bound in that van, there was a pillow behind her. Well, this other picture seemed to show that very same pillow, but that picture, no other evidence came forward from it, indicating, you know, where it was taken or where it could be located or who was in it and so on. And again, the, the, the film that was produced for it, again, indicated the time period being around that same specific spot, June 1989 or so. And then there was another picture that was found later on. And in this case, it had to do with a male passenger, in this case with a younger female passenger. And she too seemed to have been bound. And there she was wearing some kind of large black rimmed glasses, like reading glasses. And she had some kind of gauze across her mouth and and something else like covering her mouth and this was looked to be inside of an Amtrak train for whatever reason but again this was something else that was no clue no identity as to where the location was or who the people were and then the film that was used could be traced actually to a year later in this case February of 1990 but that's pretty much it as far as the only known indicators of Terra Calico or potentially Terra Calico because again all the, the the young women featured within those pictures remain unidentified at least when it comes to conclusively stating that it truly was her. The only other developments that came afterward was this. In 2008, the sheriff of Valencia County, uh, Rene Rivera, stated that he received info from two teenagers stating that they in turn accidentally ran into Tara while they were driving their truck. And so apparently they didn't kill her at first. She must have been riding her bike again on that same road that I mentioned earlier. And on that fateful morning, they accidentally or purposely, who knows, ran into her. And when that happened, they, she didn't outright die, but in a panicked mode, they ended up killing her to prevent her accident from leaking out or something along those lines. It made it seem like the boys were trying to cover up what happened because they were fearful, of course, of repercussions. But no arrests, nothing as far as convictions were given uh, because of that, um, uh, because of that fact. And so that remains inconclusive. And then the only other thing that I was that I started after was this. Uh, in 2019, just last year, remember I was mentioning about the FBI starting a new thing. They have now introduced a reward of up to $20,000 for any information leading to the identification or location of Tara Calico, and then also potentially leading to the arrest of whoever the kidnapper was. If that's the case, then uh, maybe who knows that could help in terms of finding out what occurred to Tara even after all these years because this disappearance again occurred in 1988 cutting to today 2020 that would place her um, as as someone middle-aged and so um, finding her today would be especially tough because of the fact that so many years have passed but the FBI is still offering this brand new reward. I wonder sometimes if the FBI or any other law enforcement does this too because they've come across somewhat new information that they can't reveal just yet but they want to make sure this new information correlates with what other people may state. So maybe they offer these new rewards to see if maybe new leads can link to whatever they have found. But either way, though, that's pretty much all the information I could list here when it comes to the disappearance of Tara Calico. Truly, truly tragic. Not just her disappearance, but again, how close things were right down at where the cargo was likely contained within it and having police would probably be within hours of being that close to stopping that cargo van from 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 escaping from that location that's how close things were and so truly truly it tugged at my heart when i was reading that info but if anybody has any more info anything else you might have missed as far as a tragic disappearance then please post it below and as always if you want to share this video to anyone out there part of the reason why i do these mysteries and disappearances videos is because who knows maybe if the stuff is shared to others they may stir up information they may actually have people find more info tied to whoever i'm talking about as far as the disappearance in these videos and that could help trigger other stuff going forward because they do get a good number of views as far as these videos and so uh, any kind of new views or sharing would absolutely help out when it comes to these cases but thanks again everyone as always take care bye